What's going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome back to another installment in my pre-1980 classic review series. The first review of the new year 2020. Thank you for sticking around for 2019 in this series and I got more to come in the new year. This month's theme is classic movies on the American Film Institute's 100 Greatest Movies list that I haven't seen. The movie I'm watching it was placed at number 17. I'm doing the 2007 list. Their more recent list they did. I think that's a more relevant list in my opinion, I guess. And the movie I'm taking a look at today is a 1960s comedy. Kind of broke down some barriers on content. And it's definitely considered one of the best films of its era. And I hadn't seen it before, so this is my review of The Graduate. So The Graduate was released in 1967. It was a groundbreaking comedy that came out at the time. The movie was directed by Mike Nichols and this was his second film. He most recently broke down some other barriers and challenged some censors with his film Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, another movie I haven't seen. I've also looked up his filmography. He's also directed movies you may have heard of, known as movies such as Silkwood and The Birdcage and Charlie Wilson's War, just to name a few. I hadn't seen a single one of his films, and my first introduction to this director was The Graduate, so now I'm intrigued to see more of his movies now. Graduate was nominated for seven Oscars, and Mike Nichols won for Best Director. So in The Graduate, Shy Benjamin Braddock played by Dustin Hoffman, returns home from college with an uncertain future. Then the wife of his father's business partner, the sexy Mrs. Robinson, played by Ann Barkeroff, seduces him, and the affair only deepens his confusion. That is, until he meets the girl of his dreams, played by Catherine Ross. But there's one problem. She's Mrs. Robinson's daughter. Oh, no! So The Graduate was a movie that had been on my radar for a while. It's definitely one of those movies people are like, if you're a hardcore film buff, this is a must watch. I'm really shocked that it's not on that 100 movies bucket list poster that I bought recently because I figured this movie would have been on there, but it's not. And what do I think of this movie? I do enjoy it. I actually think it's a wild and entertaining story. It definitely captures the time capsule of a lot of the youth of the 1960s, a lot of rebellious nature during the counterculture era. And this movie doesn't really address hippies or any way, but you know, there's a culture where the I think the youth of the 60s felt like they were disillusioned from everything and they wanted a lifestyle that was different than the life of their parents. And I think it captured that very well. And I think Dustin Hoffman's character, especially Benjamin, uh, regardless of the generation that you're in, I do think he is a relatable character because I think we all have that stage in our life where we're confused about where we want to go in life. Uh, he's be, he was being groomed to get a big education, but that wasn't something he truly wanted. It was something his parents wanted. And I did find that pretty relatable, and I did enjoy seeing that frustration captured on film. I do think the performances in here are really great. This was one, I think this was like Dustin Hoffman's first big movie, and of course he went on to be an established actor over throughout the decades. And this is a great performance. I really enjoyed what he brought to the film, and it was definitely a great way to kickstart a career. I think Ann Barcroft, I think, definitely selled in the seductiveness of Mrs. Robinson. I thought she was a very memorable character, and I enjoyed what she brought to the screen. And Catherine Ross as the daughter definitely was that icing on top and just made the whole experience just a blast to watch. I think the direction in here from Mike Nichols, uh, he treats it like a legit film. I think a lot of comedic directors, it seemed like it seemed like they just see a comedy and they just do as little as possible just because people think the laughs are what's important in comedy. No, 
the filmmaking is just as important as the humor and the dialogue. And Mike Nichols does that to a T. And I can see why he won the Oscar for Best Director in this movie. Because he does a great job with the framing of the shots, the editing, the cinematography. Just the filmmaking in general is top notch. And I definitely have to commend him for going above and beyond what I think a lot of directors do with more comical films. He definitely still makes it feel like an artistic film, and I think that's just awesome. There's iconic songs in here. The whole soundtrack was provided by Simon and Garfunkel, and a lot of their most iconic songs are actually in this soundtrack, like The Sound of Silence and Scarborough Fair, and especially Mrs. Robinson, which is easily the standout song of the whole movie. It's definitely one of those earworm songs. And you just can't help but love and just sing along to it while it's in the movie. Definitely one of those types of songs. Another thing I gotta bring up is the finale of the movie. And I'm not gonna go into spoilers if you hadn't seen The Graduate. But the finale of this movie apparently is one that's pretty divisive for a lot of people from what I understand. But I do think the conclusion is very entertaining and comical, but it is very ambiguous, and it does really leave you thinking, uh, which is something I wasn't expecting going into The Graduate. I was expecting to see a little comical farce. There is some funny moments in there, but there's definitely some moments in there you're like, huh, was it all worth it in the end? And those are movies I tend to enjoy, so The Graduate definitely does that. Another thing I need to mention is the fact that uh, I recently watched the film You're a Big Boy Now for the Francis Ford Coppola Marathon and that movie was negatively compared to The Graduate and I said in that video that when I finally watched The Graduate I would see, determine, I guess, what is the better film. And both movies are pretty entertaining and they actually do capture similar themes about confused youth in the 60s and I guess their rebellious nature. Both are sex-obsessed comedies. Both feature soundtracks from a popular band at the time. This one had Simon and Garfunkel. Your big boy now had The Lovin' Spoonful. Both movies are entertaining to watch, but I, I feel like of the two, I think The Graduate not only is the better directed film, but I don't think The Graduate is as dated compared to Your Big Boy Now because The Graduate, I feel like, has characters that are more relatable. I feel like You're a Big Boy Now focused more on what the time and it's a 60s time capsule movie. And there are some 60s moments here, but The Graduate has more relatable characters. I just find myself more entertained by the scenarios in that film than I was in You're a Big Boy Now, even though both movies are fun to watch. Now, my only real issue with the Graduate and why I don't rank it as among my personal favorites is even though the characters are entertaining to watch, I did feel a little bit of a disconnect at the same time. I can relate to Dustin Hoffman's confusion as a character, but then his obsessions as well are a little creepy. And there were some times where it does take me out of the movie. Mrs. Robinson is an entertaining character, but then her motivations are really horrible. The fact that she clearly doesn't care about the relationship she's already in and is putting an even greater confusion on Dustin Hoffman's Benjamin character uh, makes her this really horrible character. The daughter is the only sane character in the movie, but she's probably she's the least interesting at the same time. So something about these characters, while they're enjoyable and I enjoy the movie as a whole, it just the way the characters are written, it's really hard to get into them throughout a lot of the movie, despite the intentions of the director. It's, it's definitely a little disconnect in there where I feel alienated with some of the decisions the characters make. I do think The Graduate is a good movie, and if you're a hardcore film fan, it's definitely one worth checking out, especially for the filmmaking. It did challenge some censors at the time. This was definitely... That they went a lot more into sexuality in this film compared to other films and uh, how characters get into affairs and the way 
And some of the discussions and sex-related dialogue, I think, was a little more intense than some other films of that era. And then I think shortly afterwards, the Hays Code censors just faded away, and we have the modern-day rating system. So The Graduate was one that challenged the Hays Code on sex-related topics. And a lot of those censors I found ridiculous anyway, so I guess good for The Graduate for taking some risks. I actually do enjoy that in movies when movies take risks. This is a very entertaining movie. It's very funny and entertaining for a while. I enjoy the filmmaking, the overall direction, the great performances, the soundtrack. This is very much a rock solid movie. Not a personal favorite of mine, but if it's a personal favorite for you, I'm glad you love it. I didn't have that huge emotional connection like a lot of people do. But I still enjoyed it for what it was, and I'm going to give The Graduate a 4 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 72 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of The Graduate as part of the pre-1980 classic review series I'm doing on my channel where I review two classics a month released prior to 1980 to shed some more light on some classic films that may be overlooked in the YouTube community. Join me later on in the month of January where I'll review another pre-1980 classic that's on the 100 Film Institute's 100 Greatest Movies list, another one I hadn't seen. The next movie I'm doing is on the 100 movie bucket list poster, which I plan on starting very, very soon. And I'll be taking a look at the 1978 film, The Deer Hunter. And I think that'll be an interesting little movie to watch as well. If you're a hardcore fan of classic movies, I'll leave a link in the description below for the pre-1980 classic movie review playlist. I have a wide variety of classic movie reviews I've reviewed all throughout 2019 and more to come in the new year. If you're a fan of classic cinema, I'm sure there's something you'll enjoy. I'll leave that link in the description below for you to see more. If you've seen The Graduate, let me know down in the comments below. Would you follow the film? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. And if your comments are respectful, your comments could be potentially seen in future comment shout out videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!